American Water Polo. Hi, this is Damon Uman from American Water Polo, and we're here today to profile the club team of Windy City Water Polo. And we're going to see what uh, Kyle Perry has been doing lately. Um, how you doing, Kyle? Uh, good. <laughs> doing all right. Surviving, I would say. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, well, that's all we can do these days. You know, we're we're trying our best here. So we just wanted to, um, you know, get together and, and, and learn more about your club, and you know, kind of give me give me some you know basic info and look you know, where you guys are located, what the age group, and what the mission of the club team is. So uh, the Windy City Water Bowl Club is located in Oak Park, Illinois. Uh, we're the first suburb west of the city of Chicago. Um, we uh, have had water polo. We were based out of Fenwick High School as our home pool. Um, and uh, a lot of our high school boys, uh, we've got high school boys, high school girls. We have age group uh, through about six and under-ish. Uh, my son's six, and he, he plays with our 10 and under group. Uh, we do a lot of, you know, sort of modified in the shallow end, two hands, just silly stuff, jump off the bottom, play a lot of games with those those youngest kids. Um, and then we have senior teams for uh, for both men and women. Um, so we kind of have, you know, the cool thing about our club is you can you can play from six all the way till, you know, forever basically. Um, you know, there's a couple couple guys on our, our senior team that have sons that you know are just graduating college that, that like they now their senior son is playing on the senior team with the, the dads and stuff like that which is pretty neat and uh, during the summers we have a, a women's team uh, for senior women too which is, is kind of a rare thing um, and we try to do it year-round just the, the, the attendance isn't always there so we kind of put it in as much as we can but we get a good summer group um, yeah, we, we play pretty much year round for a lot of our groups, but we understand that a lot of kids, we want, we want them to go do other stuff. So, um, you know, we don't really, there's no expectation that you got to play 12 months of water polo or even nine months of water polo um, with our club. And it's, if, you know, if you want to do hockey, you want to go swim, you want to play basketball, you do something else like that's great. We'd just love to see you again another season. Um, mission of our club is, is probably just to, you know, continue to grow water polo in Illinois and have a lot of fun. Um, you know, our, our, we, we have kids from all over. Um, there's a lot more clubs now in the last 10, 10, 15 years in Illinois. Uh, for a while, we were one of the few, certainly one of the few bigger clubs. And so we were getting kids from all over the place. And um, that was kind of really neat to send these kids then back to their high schools and see them be really successful at, you know, or if they played with us through eighth grade and then see them go off and, and play at, at a high school uh, and be really successful at their high schools after playing with us for, for several years, which is always pretty neat. Oh, that's great, Kyle. I mean, you, you, you should put that on a t-shirt, you know, six, you can play from age six to 65. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's Thank for you. sure. And, you know, it's, it's neat. I mean, a lot of our, uh, you know, a lot of my coaches are like, Hey, I want to play with the masters team. And, you know, I, I'd say, uh, you know, most of the, a lot of our, a lot of the guys on the masters group and, and on the masters women's team too, they're all guys and girls that have played with us you know, growing up or in high school or, you know, at some other point, which is really, it's really neat. You get these great relationships. I mean, one of my assistant coaches, Ben Gronwald, uh, he and his brother, Josh, they played for me as age groupers. And now, now Ben's uh, one of my assistants, both at on Windy City, but he also helps out at, uh, at Fenwick high school. And, you know, it's just amazing. You know, like this is a kid that, you know, we saw him grow up like you know, 10, 11 years old. And now, now he's a full blown adult. Like it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's great to see the cycle, you know, giving back. And then, you know, these, these coaches, they come back and they want to stay involved in the program. They gave back mm -hmm. so much. So that's, that's great to see. Hey, what, um, what have you been doing, um, you know, among many other things to keep yourself busy during these times? So I'm a, I'm a teacher. Uh, so we're, uh, we're doing distance learning or e-learning right now. Um, I'm an English teacher. So um, it's, it's been really weird. I think uh, a lot of my classes very discussion based and um it's it's kind of challenging to have a discussion <laughs> in this setup at least for me um and uh and we're still figuring out like all the pieces of technology and what we can use what we should use what we're trying to use and so um you know we're doing e-learning uh basically the students have a full school day so the expectation is they're doing about 45 minutes of work for my english class uh, so, so far, we've, we've been doing a lot of writing, which is nice. I was able to take a lot of our um, peer editing and writing process that we're working on for big paper and put it all online. So a lot of what we would do in class, we're able to do online pretty seamlessly. 
Um, but you know, they're also just the timing is, I mean, timing is terrible for everything, but like we're reading two plays and right now, and it's like, it stinks reading a play by yourself. At least I, that's how I think it. And so I, I feel really bad for them right now. I mean, we finished, we finished Antigone. We had, we had about halfway through before we went on, on e-learning and, um, and then they finished that on their own. Uh, and then we just started a doll's house. And so they're doing this sort of collaborative, uh, uh, work in groups of like eight or nine students and they're all kind of getting together and then creating these presentations uh, which they're sharing to our class and going from there so I mean that's pretty much my my academic day uh, my wife's a teacher too so she's she's doing the same similar setup and uh, my son's in first grade so he he's got a a, a similar thing and uh, uh, my daughter's in preschool so she's pretty much just playing and, and running around like a crazy person all the time so um, very busy, uh, you know, surprisingly busy thinking that I'm not at school from, you know, maybe 6 a.m. morning practice until, you know, 6.30 or later for afternoon practice. Uh, surprisingly busy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I, when, I, when I'm talking to my wife as well, you know, we, we feel like, you know, a lot of people are in the same boat. We're all balancing, you know, video conference calls, e-learning, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, everyday daily tasks that you would do, do at the office or, or at school. Um, you know, and then having your children involved. So yeah, with a little little sidekick right next to you. Uh, yeah, I'm waiting for mine to. They'll eventually figure out that I'm hiding from them. They'll they'll likely get into the screen at some point. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. Well, so um, you know, I know the, the the high school season. You know, was was in the midst of the high school season, and, and obviously club stuff kind of takes a back seat during that time. But how have you been keeping in touch with your athletes? You know, how are they holding up? Obviously, you probably teach some of them at school um what have you heard from them yeah so uh, to be honest I, I I've had kind of I would say little communication in that you know one of the things for me I, I that I'm sort of very conscious of is like I'm trying not to add any more screen time to mm -hmm. their lives um right. you know for, for the e-learning you know they they might be doing screen stuff from you know from like nine to three or give or take those hours and then wanting to you know socialize with their friends being on their screens at that point so you know, I have I have stayed in touch via a couple emails um, over the last two weeks. Uh, we had our last practice uh, two weeks ago, Friday, um, and you can kind of see the writing on the wall. It was an optional morning practice, and I told them just like this might be the end. <laughs> so like, come on in. And we just scrimmaged and just had some fun, and um, you know, and we said, hey, if this is the last one, we had some fun with it and uh, enjoyed ourselves. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I've, I've kind of kept communication minimum uh, just because I don't want to. You know, I, I did send them. I did send them some exercises that we do, some dryland stuff that we do. I sent them a couple articles that I was reading that I thought would be good for them for when they're stuck at home, things like that. But you know, again, I, I don't want them to be watching you know a forty-five minute video. I don't want them to be doing a ton of more stuff on top of all the other screen stuff. Like, you know, I'd rather they just go you know in their backyard and just hang out by themselves, <laughs> just right. alone. And, you know, just just be in the moment here. Um, yeah, that's a good. So way yeah, to, that's a good way to look at it too. You want to unplug it for for a bit for them. That's a, that's important for them. To... Right, and I, I think that's what's cool. I mean, about sports is that that that's what it does. I mean, you know, you you, you can't bring your cell phone into the pool. Like it just doesn't it doesn't really work that well. So you know, for for us to take that away is really challenging. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm not adding to that electronic workload that, that is just piling up for them. Right, right. Well, so so I guess that kind of deems in the next question is that like, you know, what are you looking forward to most to when you know when you can get back in the in the in, on the deck with your athletes? I mean, just seeing all of them is is the big thing. Um, you know, there it's uh, you know I realize it, but you don't realize sometimes like how how important it is to see all those guys and to be with all your friends and to be with your you know for me my work colleagues as well both the teachers that I work with and the, the, the coaches that I have a chance to work with. And, you know, so just seeing all those people and, um, you know, having a chance to get that face-to-face -face communication is just going to be so much, uh, such a welcome. Um, you know, I, I read someone posted uh, recently, you know, like I'll never complain about morning practice again, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, now that it's been, it's been gone, you know, so like that, that part, I think, um, you know, and, and I, I, for us, I mean, the IHSA has not officially um, canceled our, our spring season. We're still just in a holding pattern as well. Um, you know, so I'm trying to be as upbeat and optimistic. I mean, I, I think, our, I feel, you know, our team this year has, has is a great team. 
Um, you know, and so I would love to just be back and just be competitive with them and challenge them and get, get them, you know, I mean, I don't know, this season would be easy. If you can get through what we're getting through right now, like you can get through any practice that we're going to throw at you all season long. Like, I mean, if you can do this, you're going to be good. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Well, I, I hope your fingers crossed on that one and, uh, you know, you guys be back in the pool and, um, as soon as you can, for sure. So I guess, um, so for, for, as we kind of, um, you know, wrap up here what's the um you got any good you know guy like i like yourself who, who's an english uh teacher can you recommend any any good books for for athletes um you know during this time period as they you know they kind of get off the screens and you know, get a good book in their hands yeah um but so so my favorite author that totally non-academic is just clive cussler um it, it's they're pretty trashy adventure novels, um, but I, I love them. I mean, it's, it's like the same plot recycled over and over, but like, I, I, I can't get enough. Like I, um, so anything by Clive Custer, I would say, put it on the list. It has nothing to do with swimming or water bowl, other than right. he, a lot of it is based on some like maritime stuff. And so the ocean is always present in the stories. Um, uh, last year I read, or actually it's a couple of years ago now, I read uh, The Three Year Swim Club. Um, and it was about, uh, um the uh there's a club in hawaii um getting ready for uh the tokyo olympics uh not this not our most recent olympics but uh the one and it was i think it gets canceled um and three year swim club was the name and it was just about how this coach took a bunch of kids that um several of them didn't even know how to swim and uh was able to turn them into some incredible swimmers and um, they actually, there's a Fenwick connection because at one point while they were doing this crazy tour around the country, um, they swam at Fenwick and um, in our old pool, it was four lanes, really shallow, two, about three feet on the one, two and a half feet on the one side, maybe seven feet on the deep end. Uh, and they broke, you know, broke pool records. They were just, this is incredible story. Um, yeah, that was, that was really good. I'm reading right now, uh, Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court, an old Mark Twain story, uh, novel. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, anything and, and read is all I would just push out there. It's like anything you can read is going to be good. I've been, um, I've been on a kick. Our library did a bunch of purging at the high school, uh, the collection. And so I picked up a bunch of just really, really weird and random stuff that, you know, oftentimes when people are like, what are you reading? I'm like, I'm kind of embarrassed to tell you this one. <laughs> um, you know, just because it's just weird. It's just Don't strange. Don't throw it out. Just, just, but, yeah, a lot of, a lot, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll take it. I read it. And then we have, in Oak Park, although I haven't been doing this now with the, because, you know, how long this stuff can last on, on paper, cardboard, whatever. Uh, we have all over Oak Park, we have these little libraries, like the little libraries. It's like a birdhouse, but it's for books. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so I've So they're all that. over Oak Park. And so, you know, I read, I read one of these, you know, very interesting and sort of oddball books. And I just tuck them in those libraries or I give them to my students if, if anybody wants them. Um, so I'm passing them on. So they're not sitting in my house once I finish them, but yeah, I got, I have a huge I'm stack sure of like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I tell her every time I'm like, this one's leaving the house. Don't worry. This one's gone. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Well, Kyle, I, I really appreciate the time, man. It, it's been great learning more about um, yourself, but you know, and also the you know, Windy City Club. Um, and this is uh, Damon Newman from American Water Polo. Uh, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and our website, American Water Polo. Uh, dot org and remember, remember it's important to stay connected to what's important to you thank you very much for having me great awesome i, I appreciate it kyle thanks man